everyone. Just wanted to share a quick little metrology project I worked on uh, last week. Um, we just came into possession of one of these cheap granite um, comparator stands, and I figured it might be a good candidate to use my millimess on, but the original indicator mount it came with was one of those really cheap ones, like that. And obviously it's totally unusable with something like the millimess. So I made this up last week, and I just really wanted to go over it real quick share some of my design thinking and then uh, show off how it works and just what you can see with 20 millionths resolution because you can do some pretty cool pretty cool tricks with that so this is the indicator mount it's itself it's actually a piece of water jet aluminum um, there are a couple milled surfaces now obviously but the flexures that it operates off of are completely water jet. And there's a little bit of taper in there towards the end of the corners, but overall it turned out really well and it works all right. So as you can see, basically this is just a very simple uh, double arm flexure uh, with the micrometer applying force right on the center of stiffness. So it creates a perfect parallel motion in the axis of the indicator uh, for a really nice fine adjust. You can get about uh, 10 or so, 10 to 20 thou of travel out of this uh, linkage, which isn't a lot, but it's plenty for what this is. And the important thing is it gives me super smooth motion with absolutely zero backlash, zero stored energy, no hysteresis at all. It just is perfect. Uh, perfectly smooth motion that allows me to adjust and zero the indicator really well. Uh, the mount is just a brass sleeve that I press fit in. And then the locking, I haven't made a knob yet, so this is just a cap screw uh, for a temporary solution. But it doesn't actually come through uh, to the inside of the bore. This hole is just drilled and the end of the screw is turned down slightly to where it just comes into contact with the outside of the brass sleeve. So essentially all it's doing is just collapsing the sleeve down. It doesn't actually contact or mar the, the uh, shaft at all. It just pinches the, pinches the sleeve slightly since it's a really good fit and it makes a really good uh, lock uh, to keep it nice and rigid. So this is the this is the base. I can go ahead and throw it back on here, and then I'll show you a couple cool cool little tricks and how well it works. So here we are. I've got the indicator zeroed on a gauge block here. Uh, you can see as I turn this, there's just a really beautiful backlash-free motion there you can sneak up on the zero really nicely just like that so one thing when we were first testing it uh, uh, just a, a simple test is we were checking the parallelism of our gauge blocks here and we sort of panicked for a second because we measured uh, across the gauge block and found that it was a little bit out of parallel, like the indicator was actually moving, which is not ideal. However, you can see here, if I move this gauge block across, it's parallel. There's not, there's not any appreciable error there. There's a little bit of noise and a little bit of deflection maybe as I put that sideways force on the indicator. but overall it's within 20 millionths. So why, was, why were we reading a not parallel reading before? Well, we realized what happened was we went and got our gauge block, took it out of the case, cleaned it off, right? Because it's important to have the block be clean, make sure there's nothing on it, wipe it off, 
wipe the surface plate off because you don't want any dust there, do we? That would interfere with our measurement. I just want to wipe this on my hand here and then we can measure it. But ooh, notice how I've been holding this the whole time, holding it by the edge, putting heat into one side but not the other. So what happened was we heated up one side of the block by holding it and that side expanded and basically as far as the indicator concern, was concerned it went wonk and made the block out of parallel because it was larger on one side than the other. Now you won't be able to appreciate it as much with this block because it's a lot smaller so the uh, expansion is a lot less but we were doing this with a four inch block initially. You can see Oh yeah, there's not, it's actually not too bad with this one at all. With a four inch block, holding it for any appreciable amount of time, it will become out of parallel as the block expands and the top can't silver like that. That was just a crazy lesson in how, how sensitive these measurements can be to thermal error and the like. And then of course we have the classic example of the thickness of the Sharpie mark. So most people normally don't think of a Sharpie mark of having a thickness, obviously, but with this high resolution, it becomes very easy to see just how thick it is. So we've got the block zeroed here. What I'll do is I'll take it and I will mark a few lines on it with the Sharpie here. Not gonna go over it, so it's just one, one Sharpie mark thickness in total. I'm just spreading out that thickness evenly over the surface area of the block there. Let that dry for a moment. And then, if we go back, put it on the surface plate. Look at that. So that's a little bit over two tenths. It's not super stable. But obviously if I press down on it, I can make it smaller because it's not the most, Sharpie isn't the most rigid material ever, but there you go. This little mark has a thickness. Very, very small thickness, but around two tenths. And you would not be able to see that with any other means of measuring. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed that. I just wanted to share my first little foray into a precision mechanics project, if you will. Um, first time using flexures and all that. And I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. This will be a really handy tool to have uh, in the future. I'm sure this could be modified into lots of other uh, designs. Uh, repeat a meter for the surface plate is definitely on the table in the future, but yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.